Two Wheels TV is proudly powered by Broadlink, delivering serious bandwidth for serious business. TRP importers and distributors of leading motorcycle brands and accessories for fly riding gear and Bridgestone tires. Welcome to the show. This week, Mark James Hunter rides an old bike and later on some great track action from SWAT cops. Hold on tight. about the escalating fuel prices and every price and everything. So this time around, we thought we would choose a very economical motorbike. And believe me, there's not more economical motorbike than this Royal Enfield Classic 500. And I'll tell you why before I get into things. Recently, I've been told a guy bought one of these and he was running it in. Can you imagine how slow that is? And with a 13.5 litre tank, he got well over 400 kilometres. Can you believe it? That's like 35, 40 kilometres per litre. Not bad at all for a 500 single. Now let's just get into the Royal Enfield history. I'll keep it brief because it is very long. In the 1800s, Lee Enfield made rifles and small arms in England. In 1901, the first ever Royal Enfield motorcycle came out of a shed. Now, in my mind, that's earlier than Harley Davidson or anyone who say they had the oldest motorcycles. In the 1950s, England exported 800 plus Royal Enfields to the Indian Army where to save shipping costs, I suppose, they decided to then make them there. The last Royal Enfield made in England came off the production line in 1970, which was the last of the genuine Royal Enfields. And as we know today, they are now made in India, which is this. No bad thing, because this is seriously one cool quality, high class motorcycle. Nothing has changed much since 1950s with the Royal Enfield. It's still 500cc, single cylinder, four stroke, extra long stroke motor, and it makes 27 horsepower, 41 newton meters of torque, which isn't a lot, but it now has twin plug head for emissions and fuel injection by Kayin, the famous Japanese fueling experts. Hence, how economical this bike is. So you're wondering now, what's it like to ride? Does it feel like something that's 100 years old? Not at all. The fueling is actually really good. Light clutch, five-speed gearbox, and let's not forget that economy. And it's the only bike I've ever seen that's got not only twin shocks, but a sprung saddle as well. So the comfort levels are really high. Steering lock is huge, so through traffic, it's, to me, the perfect commuter. It will never age. 40 years, 50 years time, it'll still look exactly the same. And the cute factor goes through the roof. I'll tell you why, because wherever I go, on normal bikes, super bikes, modern bikes, fancy bikes, people go, oh yeah, that's really nice. This cute level, everyone's phone's out, and no one knows, which is the big thumbs up for Royal Enfield, if I've actually restored this, or it's a brand new one. This guy said he's got lots of pictures of an Enfield because his mate went on one. Come on. Yeah. There you see, that's because he's uh, riding a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> no, they actually did, they did, a, they did a whole road trip. Yeah, through where? Uh, the Malayas? No, 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 just in South Africa, just on the outlying. Um, oh, okay. Um, you want to take his number down and give him a call there? No. Um, OK. But thanks for asking. <laughs> we all know India is one severely congested country. Very loud indeed. Everyone shouting, everyone bustling to get into. So one of the features on this, which I find hilarious, is how loud are these horns? <laughs> Unbelievable, deafening. Why don't other bikes have that sort of thing, rather than an e instead of a ba? Good feature, I like it. Uh, 
I didn't know horses can close gates. You know what I mean. Let's look, get back to the performance. It's not going to light your pants on fire with 27 horsepower and 41 newton meters. The best cruising speed is 100 to 110. Any more than that and vibration sets in, like a mechanical rev limiter, if you want to call it that. So chug along, save fuel, sip at fuel, turns, handles, brakes are good, disc up front to make it modern, drum at rear, don't know why. Which one costs more to make, disc or drum? Now there's a question for future debates, shall we say. But all in all, it's so easy to ride, and I would say Royal Enfield Classic 500 is actually one of the most perfect bikes you could actually learn to ride a motorcycle on. It's so easy. I'm quite pleased Rad Moto, the KTM specialist, are the only people in Johannesburg that sell Royal Enfields. Let me ride this. It's opened my eyes a bit to an all new way of commuting in an old school. By the way, you can do tours around the Himalayas on Royal Enfields. Many people have done features in magazines and various articles saying they have done so. But we up here in Outang do not have the Himalayas. But I have found a BMX track, so I'm just going to trundle around and see if it does actually work off-road. How can a million riders be wrong? <laughs>